It's a great story. I really love this because new technology when it comes to building new homes has come a long way. Today I have Rick Murdoch from Autoval. Did I say that name correct? You did. In mm -hmm. Idaho. Yes. You've been in the manufacturing business for 49 years. Autoval is a, it's, it's one of a kind today in the United States. It's the only fully automated robotic manufacturing company in the country. Uh, it's um, got 66 robots and it's got about 260 people, right? And the robots work for the people, right? And it takes the heavy lifting off people, puts it on machines, which lets people work longer, takes care of their health better, their physical better, uh, all those different things, and gives them the time to take their intellect and put it in different areas in the company. And, and Not to, to mention robots don't sleep, so they can just Robots keep don't sleep, uh, and they're precise, right? You get the precision every time. It's not once. And uh, if you've ever been out in the construction world, you know what the weight of the tools are that you have to carry. And any human, when you're doing that all day long, you can't be as exact as what you'd like to be because it's physically challenging. Factory built homes years ago, to me, weren't good enough. There was some companies that just built the walls and then they stacked the walls on the truck. They bring a man, crane in the walls, mm -hmm. tie it all together, then stick frame the roof, bring in the trusses, stick frame the interior walls. There are some that build modular design, say 12 by 20, put it on a trailer, bring it in, crane in that one piece, crane in the next piece. Do you do all of this or do you, which way do you do it? We're a volumetric builder, right, for the company. And so we build a six-sided box, so to speak, right? And we do all the interior finishes to where it's ready to go to complete. They've got appliances in it. Everything's done, wiring, plumbing, HVAC. It's all complete inside that module, right? And that's what we call it. We call them modules, right? And so our company really focuses on affordable housing because we think that's where the need's the greatest. Uh, cut the cost, make some less expensive, and and build it in 40% of the time that it takes to, to build sticks. So I'm reading that when you guys bring it in, it's 80% complete. Yes. And you're, all you have is the last 20%. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you are really building the box. Yes. Putting it on a trailer, bringing it in, craning it in, attaching the boxes mm -hmm. together based on square footage. And I've always said for the over the years, we should be building houses not to exceed 1,000 square feet, you know, because we really don't need 10,000, 5,000 square feet. We should be building smarter. Uh, and if you want, just based on 1,000 square feet, which is easy to build indoors, mm -hmm. is that you can do a flat roof and have a livable space on the roof, a usable space on the roof. So mm -hmm. there's ways we can change this concept and still have a great footprint and save on the environment, save on the energy consumption. Uh, so, so far, I'm really intrigued, okay, mm -hmm. to, to be 80% finished. Do you do plug and play when you box it together? We do. Okay. Right. So, really, what we do is our particular <clears throat> buildings, we, we've built five-story multifamily apartment buildings, right, all over the western United States. Uh, we're not a single-family housing builder. Uh, we chose to focus on density, right, and going up. Right, and so those boxes are totally complete on the interior. All your services are run out to the corridors, and so when you get on site, all your services coming in the building go straight into the corridors, hooked to each one of those units, and as soon as that's attached, you can flip on the lights and it's finished so on this, the interior. This is finely thought out. Mm -hmm. I mean, exceptionally, yeah. finely thought out. Yes. So these little things, now how do you help the environment? Now I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at this and say just really you try to not travel too far, mm -hmm. but you do, right? Like, How far do you service? Uh, we have an 800 mile radius. 800 mile radius. Right. And that's just uh, really because uh, manufacturing is different than con in typical construction because they're not contractors, you're employees. Right. Right. And so they have to be taken care of 12 months out of the year because they're raising families, right? And so an 800 mile radius, what that gives you the opportunity to do is different markets, right? Because in 800 miles, one park, it may be suffering while another market's growing. And so it gives you the versatility to pull off all those markets to continually run a manufacturing plant without shutting it down. It's a full-time business. <clears throat> full-time. Wonderful thing about building houses indoors is you're not fighting the environment. You can do it quicker. You ship it in place. The house is uh, literally erected in just a few days, mm -hmm. and then you got your finishing stages. So uh, In the manufactured housing business, uh, it, that was years ago, 49 years ago. Um, yeah, the quality of the units, uh, I would say they were okay.
right? But it was built by a different standard, right? Because all these were relocatable, right? And it really, they were caused because after the war, all of our servicemen came home and needed a place to live that they could afford. Oh, so these were designed to be re relocatable? In a, in they originally. come back up, put them somewhere else. And originally, matter of oh, fact, see, I, I think that's beautiful. Right. Person. Uh, and the military came home and they didn't have high income, so they needed something they could afford to do, and then they need to be able to transport it to wherever they were going to live. Right. And so they were all built on trailers, right, with axles and wheels, and you'd take them to a site and you'd set them down. Most always leave the axles and wheels on it. Sometimes you take the wheels off just to put them back on if you wanted to transport it. Right. So they were all relocatable. Uh, and that was under a HUD code that was developed in the U.S. Uh, so you could build the same product anywhere. Right. Uh, it wasn't it didn't take a different municipality or something to change a the code. These were all built by the HUD code and they were all transportable to any location you wanted to. And you'd build them one way. Right. Um, and that was uh, back for manufactured housing. And then modular housing changed things because then you were building the same as a traditional site built house, but you were building inside a plant. And so you had to meet all the codes of every municipality out there, the regular building codes. Right. <clears throat> so uh, that took a lot of education to understand the codes for all these different states and all the different municipalities in the in the states. Uh, so uh, we started doing everything code compliant, just like you were going to build something traditionally. There's a lot of ingredients missing for modular construction and people say, what's well, holding it back? I believe the number one thing holding it back is education. Right. You got developers out there that don't understand and don't know Mazer. They've been building the same way they've been building ever since they were children, right? And, and teaching old dog and not, tricks. Exactly, and a lot of people don't like change, even when it's needed. The wonderful thing about building houses indoors is you're not fighting the environment. You can do it quicker. You ship it in place. The house is uh, literally erected in just a few days, mm -hmm. and then you got your finishing stages. So uh, In the manufactured housing business, uh, it, that was years ago, 49 years ago. Um, yeah, the quality of the units, uh, I would say they were okay, right? But it was built by a different standard, right? Because all these were relocatable, right? And it really, they were caused because after the war, all of our servicemen came home and needed a place to live that they could afford. Oh, so these were designed to be re relocatable? In a, in Take them back up, put them somewhere else. And originally, matter of oh, fact, see, I, I think that's beautiful. Right. Uh, and the military came home and they didn't have high income, so they needed something they could afford to do, and then they need to be able to transport it to wherever they were going to live. Right. And so they were all built on trailers right, with axles and wheels, and you'd take them to a site and you'd set them down. Most always leave the axles and wheels on it. Sometimes you take the wheels off just to put them back on if you wanted to transport it, right? So they were all relocatable. Uh, and that was under a HUD code that was developed in the U.S. Uh, so you could build the same product anywhere, right? Uh, it, wasn't, it didn't take a different municipality or something to change a the code. These were all built by the HUD code, and they were all transportable to any location you wanted to. And you'd build them one way. Right. Um, and that was uh, back for manufactured housing. And then modular housing changed things because then you were building the same as a traditional site built house, but you were building it inside a plant. And so you had to meet all the codes of every municipality out there, the regular building codes. Right. <clears throat> so uh, that took a lot of education to understand the codes for all these different states and all the different municipalities in the in the states. Uh, so uh, we started doing everything code compliant, just like you were going to build something traditionally.